Hi there. Starting a series of books about aviation, general aviation. We've already done a series on military aviation, but uh, I wanted to talk about a few books that uh, cover uh, civil aviation. They do also cover military aircraft, but not in the uh, military operation of them like, like the other uh, playlist, but rather in how they were designed and manufactured. So um, that's what this particular next few uh, videos will be about. Um, I, I was always growing up uh, very interested in aviation. It, it was my prime hobby. Um, I, I used to read a lot of books, uh, the Biggles books. I had a book called So Few, which was about uh, RAF pilots. I used to watch all the movies, um, the Dam Busters. Uh, my folks took me to see um, Reach for the Sky by Douglas Bader and so on. I loved all that stuff. I used to make airfix models of aircraft and so on. And um, there was a series of books by a chap called John W. R. Taylor. And for anybody interested in, in plane spotting and different types and so on, they were good references. And many decades later, I was working at um, the air show in Paris for Boeing and he came in, he signed in um, and uh, it, it took me back really. I didn't get a chance to chat to him, but I, I did get a chance to say hello to him. And it was really um, a, a good trip down memory lane to meet him. I, of course, at the air shows, um, you know, it, it was really heaven to somebody who spent his boyhood growing up with aircraft uh, as, as his, his main hobby um, and one of the things that um, I did was um, to go to different air shows um, at one time and a book that I want to start this off with uh, is called Empire of the Clouds and it, it's a really really well written book it, it's gripping and it tells the story of post-war uh, aviation in the United Kingdom. And the book opens with the Farnborough Air Show. And I, as I mentioned, I, I worked at the Paris Air Show. I also worked at the Farnborough Air Show um, in the 80s. And, but back uh, when the book opens, which was 1952, the Farnborough Air Show was... Uh, a whole week, and it was only British manufacturers allowed to display their aircraft. And they could fill the whole program just with British designed, British made products, which, which in itself uh, showed uh, how times have changed. So uh, the whole event, which was five days of a trade show, and then the weekend was open to the public was covered by BBC and uh, Raymond Baxter was the uh, commentator. He, he was a former RAF pilot and he really knew his stuff about aviation. And I was always glued to the screen about this and you'd see all the latest aircraft and so on. And back in the 50s, one of the highlights was aircraft going supersonic. And again, it's something that you just don't see now, but they would actually fly over the farm road display at supersonic speeds producing the sonic bang and uh, this you know even though it, it annoyed some local residents it was one of the highlights of the show anyway at this particular air show there was an aircraft called the de Havilland 110 which later became it, it was kind of um, an upgrade of the vampire and it was later developed as uh, the C Vixen, I think. But it was a prototype and it was flown by a test pilot called John Derry. And uh, there was 120,000 people there. And basically the aircraft disintegrated in the in the sky, plowed into the crowd. The engine um, killed quite a few people. Um, unfortunately, John Derry's wife was there. who saw it. And um, there were 29 people killed and over 60 injured. 
before the debris was even cleared away, the flying display resumed. Now, again, sign of the times. And it resumed with a Hawker Hunter, which was a brand new jet, doing a supersonic run. So that's the kind of people that we were back then. 120,000 people were there on the Saturday. The next day on the Sunday after this tragedy and, and the big crash, which was widely publicised, obviously, there was 140,000 people turned up. So that sets the tone for the um, attitudes of the day and um, the significance of the aviation industry. These test pilots, people like John Derry, and um, Bill Waterton, who's who's has a lot in the book. He's a Canadian. Uh, they they were like the the, the star footballers are are today. They were known to all the schoolboys, and they were public figures. They weren't rewarded for that. Their pay was pretty bad, but uh, in terms of um, public profile, they they were, were um, stars. So I, I mentioned Bill Waterton. He was a Canadian who, who flew in the RAF, um, was awarded medals and so on. He became a test pilot. And he, 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 he was working for Gloucester Aviation. doesn't exist now anymore. And um, one of the things he, he did, he went on a, uh, a trade tour and he flying the Meteor, which was really the first service jet we had. And uh, he flew it uh, to France. And the French uh, even displayed even more kind of phlegm than, than uh, the British spectators at Farnborough, where they invited him to fly it down the Champs-Élysées on a busy weekday at um, rooftop level in both directions, including flying inverted. This is over a busy city centre. Uh, at, at high speeds so it again it was different times the past was a different country uh, Bill Waterton uh, went on to test the prototype of the Gloucester Javelin which was um, designed for RAF service as being an all-weather fighter it was, it was a beautiful design delta wing and delta tail but it did have a lot of problems and Bill Waterton was um, not one to keep his mouth shut about them. And uh, he was frankly disbelieved. They didn't have the same amount of um, telemetry that they have in, in aircraft now. So they were very much kind of um, uh, relying on, on direct reporting. Uh, he, he had a, a mid-air emergency and uh, didn't bail out, managed to get the aircraft back and was able to prove that the aircraft had problems. Had he bailed out, they probably would have just blamed him and, and, and said there's nothing wrong with the aircraft. But he was able to prove it was. Um, <clears throat> most aircraft have teething troubles. The thing is, do the engineers admit it? Uh, one of the other things he, he um, railed against through his whole career was the bag, what we now call ergonomics, the layout of the cockpit. Um, there was no real regard for efficiency where, where the instruments went, uh, where the controls were, uh, canopy visibility, uh, accessibility to um, the, the um, opening of the canopy and so on. Uh, and he railed against this. He said, look, people are going to be flying this in, in operational service. Uh, th this is easy stuff to sort out at, at the design level. But it fell on deaf ears for many, many years. Uh, a big part of the book, he talks about uh, the notorious defence review that was initiated by uh, Minister of Defence uh, Douglas Sands, where he he um, chopped the development of uh, jet fighters. He thought that missiles were going to do everything in the future. And th this kind of uh, highlights a point that defence reviews, which are kind of crystal ball gazing, um, and, and never accurate. For example, um, just before the Falklands, there was a lot of naval ships were going were um, in the process of being decommissioned, and uh, 
likewise some aircraft, including the Vulcans, were, were they were in the process of of um, scrapping them from RAF service. And the next thing, the Falklands happened, 1982, and the ships were needed, and the Vulcans were needed to project power in the furthest ever bombing operation. Okay, you can say that's a one-off. Then 10 years later, we're fighting in the desert. Completely different kind of war. No one foresaw that. 10 years after that, we're fighting in Iraq and Afghanistan for the longest war uh, in, in, in um, the last 200 years. So uh, defense reviews, and they're still doing it. They did one fairly recently. They're trying to predict the unpredictable. Uh, the book covers... And as I said before, it's a very well-written book. I, I found it very, very uh, gripping to read. And uh, the detail, uh, while some of it was very technical, it was always explained very well. Uh, a lot of personalities are in there. So you get to know the pilots and you get to know the decision-making and so on. Um, and it's obviously a labour of love. He loves the aviation uh, world. Uh, talks about the Comet which was the first jet airliner, but had design flaws, um, mainly because people didn't really know about metal fatigue. Um, the Viscount, the turboprop airliner, which was a big success and was adopted by a lot of American um, airlines, um, but they had to be taught how to pronounce Viscount. Um, beautiful aircraft, never flew in it, but saw it many times on the ground and uh, taking off uh, really was beautiful design and a success the uh, history behind the vc-10 which uh, was really a project called the vc the vc-7 which the raf were going to adopt as a as a, a cargo aircraft and boac which was the forerunner to british airways was going to to buy but then BOAC pulled out and not slagged it off completely. Uh, it was cancelled. Then they they realised, I won't go into it all, but the reasons were really interesting. Why the Boeings uh, that they bought weren't suitable for all the routes they were on because BOAC were flying down South America and places like that uh, and the length of Africa. Um, hot and high landing strips, not always the best runways and so on. And for certain design reasons, again, the book goes into them, and I was fascinated. Um, the Boeing-type aircraft weren't, weren't as suitable. So they called uh, upon Vickers to, to produce an alternative, and the VC-10 came, which until fairly recently was still flying uh, as a transport with the RAF. Uh, and then the TSR-2, Tactical Surveillance, as uh, Tactical Strike Reconnaissance Aircraft, which... They actually got flying. It was a wonderful aircraft, successor to the Lightning, which in itself was a terrific uh, interceptor, and then was scrapped by the Labour government. Uh, probably one of the biggest acts of vandal uh, aviation vandalism ever. Um, when, when you see it, see pictures of it, it's a, a beautiful aeroplane, and it would have done the job. So the book, Empire of the Clouds, um, terrific book uh, I've read it a couple of times really is a favourite of mine and um, it, it, if you want to start a library on aviation I can't think of a better place to start